start off with some paper crafts. Now remember the theme for this year is recycle, reuse and repurpose rather than going out and buying new stuff. So I'll give you some ideas here of, of stuff you can find around your home without having to buy anything. You also need to think about how you're going to incorporate these materials into your design. So whether you're going to make it a deliberate and obvious part of your design that you've used recycled paper. So in this case, I've used paper that's got writing on it. Or if you want to hide the fact that you have used repurposed paper. So in this one, I've mainly used paper that hasn't got any writing in it. It's entirely personal preference. It's not a right way or a wrong way. So where to find paper? There are many different sources. <laughs> One of the best places is actually probably your recycling bin, but also things like your kitchen cupboards as well. So let's have a little look at the things you can find. So you can obviously find um, magazines around the place of various types. And at the moment there might be quite a few holiday magazines kicking around as well, seeing as how we probably aren't going to get on holiday this year. Also if you go through your kitchen cupboards, you'll find wrappings and uh, food parcels as well. So there's a lovely orange colour here and this is a chocolate wrapper, a beautiful design that you could use. I don't normally say to rip up books but this one's so terrible I wouldn't want to inflict it on anyone. And the paper in here has got a lovely texture but also a great colour as well so a lovely beige in here and a bit orangey around the edge as well. You might have some napkins that you could use, maybe with designs that you could cut out and reuse. You might have some old greetings cards, um, so you could use some of the designs in there either as inspiration or cutting elements out and then repurpose them in new cards. You might also have bits of wrapping paper that you could use as well, or wallpaper even, these are all bits of wallpaper. And when I go travelling or go out, I like to collect things that have got lovely design on them. So this is a little card that I picked up in Tallinn, a little advert. But I love the design of this fish here. And I think at some point I'll cut that out and I'll reuse that in some kind of way in something. You might also have a cupboard of bits as well. So you have maybe some off cuts of card or paper or something that you don't know quite know what you want to do with them. But it's worth keeping them for things like this. And then there's always the natural world as well, so you can introduce natural elements into your designs as well, sometimes just by physically putting them on your design. And one of the ways of doing that would be to do pressed flowers. Uh, so that's incredibly easy to do. Pick some flowers or foliage. You, what you want is something that's not too fleshy or wet, because otherwise it will rot as it dry rather than drying out. And you just put it between two parts of absorbent paper and some cardboard and then pop it under a heavy book. Good use for a heavy book. And the magazines, when you get a magazine and you want to start using the paper it's a good idea to produce some kind of colour palette so that you have the paper available and you can just tear bits of paper out and you go well that's mainly purple so I'm going to pop that in my purple pot and you see I've got blue, reds and oranges, etc. And it means that when you come to use those papers, it's like having a paint palette in front of you and you can pick and choose different bits from different pots to um, complete your design. So I've just got a few examples here of, of things that I've made as, as examples for this video. This first one is entirely by torn paper, so no cutting um, tools at all here, just the physical um, properties of the paper, so either giving straight lines or curved lines and a monochrome type effect there. This one's more of a deliberate design of, of Frida here, so um, I've got some monocolour um, bright colours around the design here um, and apart from the bit of the background of her face that's got some writing on it, you probably wouldn't even know that that was recycled paper. It's also important to think about the background for your designs as well. When I first made the cat and the dog, I put them on white paper and they really didn't pop at all, but putting them on black paper, they don't look too bad at all. So we've got a ginger tabby and a dachshund um, and they're made with the book paper and they come out quite nicely. Now, if you don't have glue, you can make your own glue, but that's probably going a bit too far. You can do stitching instead. So either hand stitching or machine stitching. So this is some machine stitching, some zigzag straight lines. This is a little bit of free 
motion uh, machine embroidery so I'll talk a little bit about that in the fabric section and you can make those elements part of the design of what you're making as well so rather than just gluing the paper down around this um, image of a lemur to give it a frame I've added some stitch work on there to make it look like it's almost kind of in a jungle which it should be now these are just a few very simple and basic ideas that I managed to squeeze in time for. There are lots of different things you can do with paper, so whatever um, takes your fancy. There's all kinds of paper cutting, so um, intricate designs like that. You can also do folding, origami, 3D kind of thing, something called tea bag folding. Um, and quilling as well, which is where you roll up thin strips of, of paper and then glue them into designs as well. So lots of things for you to go and experiment there. So this is section one on paper. Let's go have a go. So in this section, we're going to talk about painting and printing ideas. And I had great fun in this section, coming up with some ideas and uh, finding some online and trying things that I'd never tried before. So one of the first things I'd like to show you is shaving foam paper marbling. Now, traditional paper marbling is quite an involved process with oil paints floated on water and all that kind of thing. But this was a really quick and easy way of making marble paper. And it really is simple as using shaving foam and food colorings. So there's a little video now to show you how to do it. And here are some of the examples of the paper that I made using this technique. Um, I think I maybe shouldn't have changed those colours, it looks a bit like Colgate. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can use whatever colours you've got in your food colouring collection. So I was trying to think of uh, ways of painting but not using paints. Um, so the next couple of crafts are, uh, are along those lines. This one is using makeup. So makeup is paint for your face really. Um, and this is my little makeup bag. I don't have very much makeup so there are many colours in there. But you can actually get really quite good effects by using uh, makeup. So this is um, uh, eyeshadow and an, an eyeshadow brush to, to make the marks with that. Again this is eyeshadow and this one I just used a fingertip to um, put the colours on and smear them in particular ways. And yes, I did attempt another portrait, so this one of Marilyn is made with gel eyeliner. I think she might approve of that one. Um, and then ink. Ink is a really good thing to be making marks on paper with as well. So I have a little pot of ink. If you haven't got a pot of ink, then well, you could make ink. That might be going quite far though. Um, you could use the ink out of a fountain pen. Uh, you can't really use ink out of a ballpoint pen though because it's got stuff in it that makes it sticky so it, it rolls out properly. Um, but if you have ink, um, and then 
it's just a sharpened stick that you just dab in and you make your marks. So you don't even need a quill or anything, you can just make a stick painting out of that. And then another technique that you can use is to have the ink on the end of the stick and then just to flick it and it makes um, all kinds of lovely little droplets. So this was attempted at something like negative painting, so I did some flicking it over a feather and you can see, you can just about tell that's a feather. But the next one that I did, I, I decided to draw on it as well, so you can see that it's a feather. You get this kind of artistic splatter production as well. And here I did some splattering over leaves and quite concentrated, so you can actually tell they, they do look like leaves. Um, or, or some kitchen roll with some ink on as well. And you can add colour to these as well. So these are just some watercolours that, that I have. And then I just inked um, um, with a stick some... Um, simple lines on top as well to give some more form to those, those paintings as well. Now I haven't done potato printing since I was probably at primary school but I wanted to actually print something um, so I gave some potato printing a try and uh, I unfortunately only had white paint because I, it was what was left over from a crafting project at Christmas um, so it naturally became a hair it, at night so I had to add the moon and stars as well and that's come out quite well and if you don't have potato you can use a cork or carrots I was wondering actually if maybe a sweet potato might work better than a normal potato because it's quite a lot denser that might be something to try as well and um, flowers and things onto paper and then just mashing them into the paper to leave some their dye behind. Last year I did a really interesting and exciting fun day crafting by using natural dyes to dye wool skeins um, and you get some wonderful earthy browns and greens and yellows and things from that. But So these are quite a lot brighter than that but these aren't going to last, they, they will oxidise over time. But I don't think that detracts from the, the crafting, that it's not permanent, that doesn't make it any less valuable. And that literally is really easy to do. Um, so you need to gather some colourful flowers from your garden or out right on your daily walk. And you need to experiment with things. Some, some things, even though they look colourful, turn out really quite kind of a muddy colour, like dandelions for some reason didn't turn out. Um, so here's some flowers from my garden, so some over bluebells, a Welsh poppy and some aquilegia. And then you cover it with a bit of plastic, you get a rolling pin and you basically just mash it into the paper. vegetation. It's a bit easier when it's dry but I'm going to show you what comes out of them. Ta -da! So we've got kind of an orange colour coming off the, the Welsh poppy so that's quite nice. Uh, the bluebells is it's quite a blue colour and the purple aquilegia is a beautiful uh, bluey purple there as well. So you can see you can then build up different colours and layers and uh, make it more intense by, by matching it a bit more than what I did just there. But, but yeah that's quite a, a cool little thing to, to give a try. And I just want to mention under this 
painting and printing section, something that I had great fun with last year, and that's something called cyanoprinting. So you buy some chemicals that react to the sunlight, and then you um, can take basically very basic photographs of, of them, and this is the basis of what a blueprint is, this is what they use to copy um, uh, architectural designs and things like that before there were such things as uh, photocopiers, so that, I, that comes out really, really nice and I really like these, and these little flaws in the inking process, that they actually just add to the character of the, the piece as well. So, there you go, there's some printing and painting ideas, let's see what ideas you come up under this. Um, this topic. So this is the third and last section of some ideas of, of things to show you and this is based on fabric and stitch um, to reuse and repurpose things in a crafty kind of way. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is hand embroidery. So it's got quite an old-fashioned kind of image like your granny used to do it but really hand embroidery is very much more versatile and free than that. You can make any design that you want to draw yourself. You could replicate a tattoo um, all the way through to having an almost lifelike picture through um, stitch painting. It's really quite amazing some of the things that people produce. Um, and you don't have to just use traditional embroidery threads either. You can use anything that makes a kind of a thread-like thing to, to make um, embroidery out of. So um, you can use leftover bits of wool, maybe you've, you've been crafting, um, crocheting or knitting or something and you've got a bit left over and it's not enough to make something else with, but you've got bits you can um, do some kind of embroidery with them. You can even use scraps of fabric as well, so um, if you cut them up into tiny little strips like that, you can use them almost like ribbons. And this is my spare ribbon tin, so whenever I get gifts, um, or boxes of chocolates or anything, and they've got nice little bits of ribbon on them, and, and even ladies' tops, you know, they've got those annoying little loops of um, ribbon inside them. I cut them off and I put them in this tin, and it means that I've always got a ready supply of things to, to decorate uh, gifts with, and also doing a little bit of um, embroidery with as well. So here's a couple of examples. This one's quite a traditional kind of embroidery design here um, and I've made it a bit more funky with a bit of that uh, paper marbling in the background there. Uh, this is ribbon stitching, so I drew a very basic stylized design on the card. Um, I put a bit of foam behind the card and used a drawing pin to mark out holes where I needed the, the ribbon to go. And then I just basically threaded the ribbon through um, to do some kind of embroidery. So there's hand embroidery, and as we saw earlier, you can use your machine to do embroidery as well. So you can do simple straight stitches or zigzags, and then there's this great technique called free machine embroidery. Um, so you need a darning fit on your machine for that, um, and you drop the feed dogs, but it means that you're basically drawing completely freehand with the needle. Now this is part of the technique involved in, in quilting with machines as well, but you can draw amazing pictures with this as well, it doesn't need to be on a quilt. Um, so here's another picture, this is from a magazine, a travel magazine, nice picture of Japan, um, and I've added a little bit of texture over the pergola, um, pagoda, sorry, and also these uh, cherry um, tree branches coming in here as well, and, and a bit of a, a red sun fabric as well. And you don't have to stick with just paper with your um, stitching either, it's paper or card. Um, you can add bits of fabric on there as well. So these are bits of fabric that would um, have, have gone in the bin otherwise, or probably in my scrap thing to be used at some other time. But they um, add de decoration to um, this design. Um, and you can even embroider words on there as well. Um, takes a bit of getting used to. It's very much kind of joined up writing kind of thing. Um, but you see, I've, I've done it before. It's um, you, you can get used to it. And then you can combine things. So this is paper that I free machine stitched, scrunched it up in a ball, and then just kind of stuck it in there and just kind of went round and round and round. And it looks almost like a rose. I mean, I, I didn't know what it was going to be when I started it out. Um, but it looks like kind of like a rose, so I've also added some scrap fabric leaves on there as well. Um, and 
free machine embroidery can, can also be on felt as well and, and can go to quite a great length. I kind of got a bit carried away with this one um, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy with my little bumblebee there and that's going to make a nice card for somebody at some point as well. So I hope you've had some inspiration from these various things that I've shown you. Remember, I'd like you to try something new and let's try to recycle, reuse and repurpose things we already have rather than buying more kits. When you've made some things over the next week, then if you pop a photo on the photo wall, then on Saturday afternoon, so on well vet uh, 23rd of May. If you join me on Saturday afternoon, we'll do some coffee and craft and we'll have a little chat. Look at your wonderful diverse ideas that you've come up with, with uh, your crafting. If you'd like to follow me and uh, find out a little bit more about what I do, I don't just write about recruitment, that's just the uh, topic at the moment, then I have a couple of websites that you can go to. So sarahthevet.com is my professional website and I will be putting some articles on there about mindful crafting. Bake, rattle and roll I've had for a very long time. Uh, it's mainly baking but there is quite a lot of photography and some crafting on there as well. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram and see what I'm making at this moment, then you can follow me on sarah.thevet. Hope to see you on Saturday. Mm -hmm.